Hey problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Got a flat tire, we're gonna use a hydraulic jack to change it out. And today's video, we're gonna talk all about hydraulic pressure and the math behind hydraulic pressure. Laminated overnight on a CNC type. Okay, how a jack works is you tighten the handle up, it locks the valve at the bottom. safety things before you jack anything up block the tires make sure you're on level ground don't really do this unless you know what you're doing and make sure you're at the right jack point now what I'm going to do is release the hydraulic pressure I turn the handle it lets the pressure out of that valve and then with no pressure on it it drop back down couple of things going on is the length of this lever and the length of that lever in addition to the hydraulic pressure. So another really cool application of hydraulics is any piece of equipment. So this is a little mini skid steer. There is in fact no drive motor at all in here. The only thing this mini skid steer has to move these logs around is a hydraulic pump. So what drives the tracks, what lifts the arms, is all hydraulic pressure. So it's a super cool idea that has an unbelievable number of applications. So we're gonna take a look at a few different mechanical advantages. The first is the lever, and then the second is the hydraulic um, transfer of power. And really where that hydraulic transfer of power comes from, whether it's a jack or a piece of equipment, is from Blaise Pascal with the really big idea that you can't compress a liquid. So let me put the camera over my shoulder and we'll go over some of these ideas right now. Okay, a lever is a simple machine and there are three classes of levers. This is a first class lever here. This is a second class lever here, and this is a third class lever down here. The fulcrum is the pivot point. So let's take a look at this first. Um, if you're old enough, you might remember a teeter-totter before somebody got hurt on those and they all got outlawed. But how this works is, you know, if there's a 100-pound person sitting here and equidistant away, a 100-pound person here, they would have the exact same forces going down and they would be in balance. However, if you move the lever over the fulcrum, and, and this is actually a circular motion of travel because as you rotate around that fulcrum, this thing's actually going this way. So you're gonna actually compare total distance traveled. So now if this total distance travel is twice as much as this total, distance traveled in this first class lever, then if this is a 200 pound person here, a 100 pound person could move that 200 pound per person. So one way I always think about mechanical advantage is I always think about it's a ratio really of the effort versus the load. And if you could find that ratio of distance traveled, that correlates directly to the mechanical advantage. So if a 100 person, 100 pound person is able to travel, whatever that is, two feet, that is the equivalent of a 200 pound person traveling one foot. If the mechanical advantage were even greater, so the fulcrum is even further down, and this amount of travel is now say four feet, then a 100 pound person can make this thing travel one foot, can make a 400 pound person travel one foot. So the ratio of travel equates to the mechanical advantage. So on that jack we're looking at, on that trolley jack, the lever, right, I'm really pushing this lever through a really large arc because my radius is so great. But if the amount this lever travels is 10 times the amount 
of this lever here, then I have 10 times the lifting power, if that makes sense. So that's a, so the lever on the jack, on that trolley jack, is a second class lever, because here's the fulcrum, here's the load and the effort, and I didn't actually measure it out, but if this amount of travel is five times this amount of travel here, if it's five times as much, and I put 100 pounds of force on this, that's gonna relate to lifting up 500 pounds of force here. So that's only the first piece of that trolley jack. The second piece is hydraulics, and we're gonna take a look at those next. All right, let's take a look at Blaise Pascal's idea. So first is this idea that liquid cannot be con compressed. So that's kind of the biggest idea. So let's take a look at a closed system right here. This we'll call um, a piston. This is a large piston, and this is a small piston right here, and there's a closed system with a liquid here. If I push down on this piston right here, it's going to push this liquid. This liquid will not compress, and it's going to lift up here. And this is really the same idea um, as that lever, but only with a, a fluid. So let's say I put five pounds of force here, and this thing travels, I don't know, let's say it travels a total of two inches, and because this thing's so much larger, it only travels up one inch. So this is a total of 10, and this is gonna be 10 as well. So this is gonna have 10 pounds of force coming up and that's how hydraulic pressure works. It's the exact same idea as that lever. If you could figure out the distance traveled here and the output distance traveled here, that ratio is gonna be the same ratio as the force. So if this is two to one, then this output of force is two to one as well. So if instead this traveled 12 inches down and this only traveled one inch up, this is gonna be 12 times more force so if this is five pounds pushing down, so this is 12 times five pounds going up, or 60 pounds of force going up. So you could see how with just a little bit of input force, you get a really big output force. Trolley jack, right, I have that lever, and let's say that lever um, only multiplied my force by five times, because the distance travel is five times as much, and I was putting 100 pounds of force into that lever, um, then this thing coming up, because of the lever, is bringing up 500 pounds. But this is actually, there's a little hydraulic piston in here, and this hydraulic piston is getting pushed by this long lever. And if the input force is only traveling a little bit on an input plunger one inch, and this is traveling only a quarter inch per stroke, that means I have four times the amount of force through hydraulic pressure. So I take that 500 pounds times that four times, and now I have 2,000 pounds of output force. So a couple ideas here on all of this. This is just kind of an overview just to get the big idea. There's usually a valve in here, and that valve is a one-way valve, so fluid can only travel one way and not back the other. Let's take a look at a problem now. So now let's say I have a lift for lifting up a truck, and it's a four-post lift, and I want to lift up a 10,000-pound truck. The pressure, and pressure is a different measure than force. Pressure is force per square area or unit area. So pressure is equal to force over unit area. So let's say I have a hydraulic pump and that hydraulic pump could generate 2,000 pounds per square inch. And let's say I have hydraulic cylinders lifting up this lift that the 10,000 pound truck is on. So the diameter of these cylinders is two inches, and the question is, how many of these cylinders would I need to lift a 10,000 pound truck? So the first thing I really need to figure out is the area of a two inch diameter cylinder. So area of a circle is pi r squared, that's equal to area. If my cylinder is a two inch diameter, 
that means two inches straight across, then the radius is one inch. So the area of that two inch diameter piston is one squared times pi. Pi is just a number, 3.14. So every cylinder has an area of 3.14 square inches. So that means if I put 2,000 pounds of force per square inch, and I have three inches, right? That means I'll be getting 6,000 pounds of force per cylinder. So how many will I need to get 10,000 pounds of force? So let's do that again. I took the 2,000 pounds per square inch, and I multiplied it by 3.14 square inches. My square inches are going to cancel. I'll use a calculator here. And that's going to give me 2,000 times 3.14, or 6,280. 6,280 pounds of force per cylinder. So how many cylinders do I need to lift 10,000 pounds? So I'm going to take that 10,000 pounds divided by the 6,280 pounds of force per cylinder. My pounds are going to cancel here. And I'm going to take 10,000 divided by 6,280, and it's going to give me 1.6 cylinders. So it's a pretty high pressure system, right, at 2,000 pounds per square inch. But you could see you could get whatever pounds you want by just adding more and more cylinders because it's going to give you more and more capacity. So there's an example problem of how hydraulics works. I hope this was informative and you got a general overview on hydraulics and mechanical advantage. It is fascinating stuff. It is, in fact, what has built the world we live in, whether it's hydraulics and equipment, mini skid steer, or a floor jack, trolley jack, uh, brakes on your car, these ideas are all over everything we use every day, and understanding the general idea of them will certainly make you a more informed person and probably a better problem solver and a better creator. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, in fact, hit like. And if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing, and I'd love to hear your comments below. Thank you for watching.